right, did Linda appear or not yet? All right, so we can proceed. So um, this is a talk that I gave at FOSDEM about a week ago. So I'm, it was 15 minutes, so I'm going to cut it down to just 10 minutes. And it's about Vert Builder and LibGuestFS. So first of all, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. Uh, you can run this tool, Vert Builder, which we wrote fairly recently. Uh, as you can see, it's not quite as fast as Docker. But what we're actually doing here is building a complete Fedora 20 disk image, a complete distribution, um, customized with new SSH keys, random seeds, and all stuff like that, and a new root password. And it does, it takes a few seconds, but it's fairly quick still. Uh, and in case you haven't seen this tool, this is called Guestfish. It's been around for a very long time, and it lets you programmatically customize uh, edit files within disk images. So I'll just, uh, I mean, say I wanted to edit that file which is quite hard when you've only got one hand available. Let's do that. Um, See, so I, could, I, could, uh, I could do this from a script, for example, and, and have it, you know, have every disk image that I created have sort of a custom logo or custom desktop or something like that. And you can see that file's actually been edited within the disk image. So Vert Builder is uh, a tool. You can run it like that. It'll create, for, in this case, a CentOS image. You can change the format and the size of the image, change the host name or the time zone, install packages. Uh, there are many different ways to edit configuration files. Uh, you can run scripts along the way. This is a first boot script. So this actually runs when the machine first boots up. But you can also run scripts during the build process itself. So lots of different ways to customize things. Uh, Vert Builder ships with a set of uh, disk images. Now, our plan is not to actually ship too many disk images with Vert Builder. In fact, we're hoping to encourage, we're actually hoping to use the cloud images that distributions already provide because it's a lot easier for us and it's a lot easier for, for the distros as well. However, if you do want to build a disk image, we have a few other tools to help you do that. Uh, Vert Install, um, this is a very old tool, but it, le it lets you actually completely install a guest from scratch. Um, it will run the regular operating system installer, such as Anaconda or Debian installer. Uh, and you can, in fact, use Preseed or Kickstart to completely automate that process. Now, one tool that we've written is called Vert Sysprep. This uses libguestfs to go in there and actually remove or unconfigure the guest. And, and the way what, we, what we're doing here is we're doing things like removing SSH keys, uh, were you know, removing log files that perhaps you don't want to reveal how the guest was created, uh, were removing the persistent network configuration and so forth. And the reason for this is because we want to take these, these disk images and we want to clone them in Vert Builder or Vert Clone or however you want to do that. You don't want every single disk image that you have to have the same SSH keys, for example. The third tool we have is called Vert Sparsifier. Now, Vert, when you actually look at a disk image, you'll see inside it there's... You know, it's a big container and there's quite a lot of space. Uh, and even files which have been deleted, um, you know, th those are actually not used by the disk image. Uh, now, Vert Sparsify can actually uh, find all of these deep inside the file system. Again, using libguestfs to look right inside. It finds all unused space. It'll find, as I say, deleted files. It'll find unused swap. It'll find, you know, logical volumes, for example, that were once created and then deleted and still have still have non-zero bytes in them, but are yet unused by the guests. And it'll, in fact, recover all of that space and give it back to the host. So it sparsifies that, gives it back to the host. The host can then allocate that space to other disks. Uh, and the final tool that we use to create disk images is XZ. Uh, XZ is a tool that we really like because it has almost best-in-class compression. There are some tools which are slightly better, but honestly, it's pretty good. 
much better than GZIP, for example. It preserves sparseness, which is very important when you've actually run Vert Sparsify to create sparseness. Uh, and the best thing about XED is it has a really strong, clear API and a good file format that's documented and so on. This has allowed us to do all sorts of clever things. We have a project called MVD Kit, uh, where we've uh, written a, it presents a, a, an XZ compressed disk image as an uncompressed disk image over a network block device, but it doesn't actually uncompress the whole disk image to do this. It only uncompresses the bits that you're actually reading. And we can do this because XZ supports random access through its API, which is brilliant. And Vert Builder also includes a custom parallel decompressor that is, uh, that is way faster than an XZ or XZ cat, which I wrote. Thank you. Um, <laughs> here, are the, here are the results. So I'll take the Fedora 20 as an example. You see, it's got a six gigabyte container, which is not very meaningful. Um, because, you know, the container's huge and you just choose that size when you create the disk image anyway, you know, so what? But even just installing the core package, you can see there's 826 megabytes used. And we've compressed that down using XZ and Vert Sparsify to 174 megabytes. So it's fair to say here that we're not, we're not trying to super minimize these disk images. We're not doing anything bad to them. We're not deleting files from the disk images that, that the thing actually uses. We're only deleting log files or changing configuration files, and that's, that's a fair enough change to make. But we're not, you know, we're not removing documentation. We're not removing yum or anything nasty like that. So you can still run yum in these, and it all works. And, and that's actually the end of my talk. So if anyone has any questions, fire away. Otherwise, I'll just show you. This slide, which shows you libguestfest.org, that's the website. There are many, many, many more tools I could possibly talk about in a 10 minute presentation, but you can find them all documented on that website. So, if anyone's got any questions? No? Brilliant. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. So is here anyone who can see himself on the board? Right. 